Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about the parathyroid gland. Now, what are the parathyroid glands? Okay, there's four of them. Now, if we take a look at the Adam's apple, which is right up here on, the, uh, on top of the trachea, right below it is the thyroid. So the thyroid is located about two and a half inches at the bottom of your neck. Okay, The parathyroids are behind the thyroid gland. Okay, They're in the back part, and they control calcium. In fact, the name of the hormone that controls calcium is the parathyroid hormone. Okay, pretty simple, right? So what does it do? If this, it, there's such a tight control for calcium in the blood, like it always wants to maintain a constant, stable calcium, it will do anything to keep that uh, level there. So it'll increase and decrease based on the level of calcium in the blood. It's like a thermostat. If you set it at 72, uh, your, your thermostat is constantly turning off and on, off and on, all day and all night, right? Same thing with the parathyroid or the calcium in the blood, okay? So it just maintains a very tight control because we need calcium for the main, for a lot of things. One is the main communication between nerves. We need calcium. Um, okay, so now when this hormone increases, it increases calcium in the blood. All right, so it's, it's raising calcium in the blood. Now, where does it get it from? It's, it gets it from the bone. So it'll literally rob the bone of calcium to keep normal levels of calcium in the blood. Um, now, it also, the, the parathyroid hormone also activates vitamin D. In other words, vitamin D in your body is usually inactive, and it has to be converted to the active form of vitamin D. The parathyroid hormone activates the enzyme to do that. Why? Because it's another control of calcium. So it'll actually increase the conversion based on uh, what's happening to um, the calcium levels, and then in it'll increase it by increasing more vitamin D. Okay, Because vitamin D actually helps you absorb calcium by 20 times in the intestines, raising the calcium in the blood. Now, what is the problem of too much calcium in the blood? It's a big problem. So sometimes these little um, glands can enlarge and turn into tumors, okay? And if that happens, this hormone starts increasing more and more and more. And uh, that means you're going to be robbing more calcium from the bone. And that's one of the causes of osteopenia. That's a lower uh, thinning of the bones. That's a mild version of osteoporosis. And then you get osteoporosis, which is a major demineralization of the bone. And then you can get fractures bone pain, and another condition called hypercalcemia, which basically means too much calcium in the blood. Okay? The problem with too much calcium in the blood is that you can get high blood pressure. Have you ever heard of a calcium channel blocker? That's the medication that blocks calcium. Well, why do you think they use that for blood pressure, right? Atrial fib, palpitations, kidney stones. You can get kidney stones from having a tumor on your parathyroid especially if they keep coming back. Uh, tiredness, why? Because the calcium is not working within the uh, brain and the nervous system and everything starts slowing down. That's why you have memory loss, concentration problems, and you can even have GERD. That's a digestive issue. That means the valve on the top of the stomach is not closing correctly. So the parathyroid is very important in controlling calcium. Okay? You can also have um, hypocalcemia, or you can have low amounts of the hormones, and there's a whole series of other symptoms that you can get. But if you look this up, the, uh, the tumor um, on the parathyroid gland, they say, well, we don't know what causes that. Okay, so we, they just remove it. Okay, so it's, but it's still, the, the, the success rate is pretty high even if you remove it, because you have four of them. And sometimes they, you can go tumors on multiple glands. But what I did is I got out my trusty toxicology book, right? So this is an amazing book that you can get a lot of information from. And I turned to the chapter on the parathyroid, okay? Because I wanted to see if there's any problem, any research being done in that area. <laughs> and it has tumors of the, of the parathyroid. Uh, one is aluminum. One is a chemical I can't even pronounce. Ozone. And the influence of xeno biotic chemicals. What's a xenobiotic chemicals? Those are foreign chemicals. 
pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. Um, so that's really what causes tumors. The same tumors that are in other parts of the body, are, which are triggered by chemicals, also affect this as well. So I don't know why they don't make the connection with these chemicals. So this is just another reason why you need to continue to consume cruciferous and other vegetables simply because, thank goodness, nature has left a remedy for all the chemicals that we are exposed to. You see so many people just ending up with these weird diseases and tumors on the parathyroid for no reason. Well, that's the reason because we were constantly exposed to that. So anyway, I wanted to just kind of give you the basics on the parathyroid and uh, put your comments below. Thanks for watching.